It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman, and we have with us here today uh, Jeff Levine from Silk City Hot Sauce, the greatest hot sauce in town. And if you go to SilkCityHotSauce.com and you put in promo code Ed, uh, you get 15% off and you get a free bottle of hot sauce. Plus, you help support the show because it's one of those commission type deals. Mr. Levine, are you there? How are you, Ed? I'm very, very good. Tell us about yourself. Who is Jeff Levine? Jeff Levine is a hot sauce maker <laughs> in Vermont. He's he's the king of hot sauce in southern Vermont. That's what my friend in uh, northern Vermont, who's also in the hot sauce business, tells me. But uh, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a pretty laid back guy. We all have our moments. And, and you were telling me right before we started the show. Well, how, first of all, how'd you get into the hot sauce business? Getting into the hot sauce business started with like a, with, a, with an obsession with hot sauce, going way back to when I was probably just added diapers, and I like ex- was exploring the kitchen and found a bottle of Tabasco, put it to my lips, and the rest is history. Um, just always been always been chasing that heat for you know for every type of meal except for you know breakfast and stuff like that, unless it's eggs. But always loved hot sauce. Going back twenty years, I remember traveling up to Maine and uh, to see a concert but on the way back we stopped at a little uh, farm like on the side of the road and mm. they were selling their products like uh, like you ever see that uh, where just like a little farm stand right at the end of a driveway oh yeah we have them down here really? all, all the time yeah we're down in Florida everybody. yeah it was really it was really cool I mean I was I grew up in the suburbs of New Jersey so it was it was I was like well pull over check that out so we pulled over and there was a guy selling you know tomatoes and zucchini and stuff like that and uh he also had a bottle of a blueberry jalapeno hot sauce and his big sign like main blueberries and fresh grown jalapenos mm-hmm. and it was really interesting I, I bought a bottle and um i thought it was one of the coolest things i ever had it was so unique and uh that that pretty much turned into like an, a quest um traveling all over the country uh for different reasons but i would always pick up hot sauce my collection grew and grew and grew and grew. I had hundreds of bottles. Um, flash forward you know, to 2017, I'm living in Vermont. I'm surrounded by farms. And uh, one day I just got inspired to uh, throw my pepper hat in the ring. I went, I went down to uh, Dutton Farm. It's not far from where, I, where I'm talking to you from right now. I started talking to George and his brother Joseph, two guys that run the farm. And uh, I said, what kind of peppers do you grow here? They said, we'll grow whatever you want. Jalapenos, mm. habaneros, long hots, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, I brought home a big bushel of peppers and turned my kitchen into a, uh, a, lab- a laboratory. And here we are. I see that. You, if you would have been driving by a meth stand, <laughs> you could have turned your kitchen into a meth lab. But I said it's a hot sauce laboratory. By the way, let me stop you for a second, man, because you said that you don't put the hot sauce on the eggs. I do. I do. Yeah. I, when I was when I said breakfast originally, I was thinking oatmeal and 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 cereal, like Applejack cereal and stuff like that. But oh no, hot sauce is an absolute must on eggs and bacon and breakfast sandwiches, stuff like that. Definitely. Yeah, I don't eat eggs anymore or, or meat. I'm vegan. Uh, but when I get to hash brown potatoes in the morning, you know, my uh, vegan toast, you know, the, what do they call it, the avocado toast, I'll put the hot sauce on the, on the hash browns. Man. Uh, and always hot sauce and a, a Bloody Mary. Hey, how come you don't have like a special hot sauce just for Bloody Marys? That's a good idea. The, the Badass Jew, which we'll get into after, that's one of my hot sauces. It's called Badass Jew. You heard that correctly. Yeah. Um, it, it is. It is. It's, it's perfect for Bloody Marys. It's jalapenos, habanero, cherry peppers. And there's tomato in that sauce as well. So it it, it actually works perfect. You know, the other day I was on the True and On podcast, right? And uh, they're big listeners to this show. They've been following my show for years, even before they had a show. And so he said, "Well, I'm going to start the show just like you always do, Ed. Tell us who is Ed Opperman." 
And I says, well, Ed Opperman loves hot sauce. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and if you go to SilkCityHotSauce.com, I gave the promo code and the whole thing. So I know a bunch of people from that night uh, went into your website. Uh, but one guy tells me, he bought the badass Jew. All right. But he says he has COVID. I don't know if he's kidding or not. He says he has COVID, so he can't tell if it tastes good or not. But he, but he can. He did like the label on there and the, and the designs on there too, because it's like artwork on your your bottles, right? Yeah, every bottle has has um, has a unique, one of a kind, original artwork. Um, the artwork is a story in and of itself. Um, growing up in New Jersey, my father was a comic book and a uh, rare memorabilia dealer. And um, we used to go to different conventions from New York to Florida to California, Chicago, everywhere. Um, so I spent my life in, in, in comic book dealers' rooms, and there were, always, there were always artists there promoting their really cool artwork. And it was just a world that, uh, that I was like, submersed in. Um, when I started the hot sauce business, I, I pretty much got rolling like everyone else i sell i set up at the farmer's market and the mm. flea market and sold my sauce to the neighbors and uh all the all the, the the regular routine of um of being like a small specialty food business but uh i don't know one day i was inspired i thought boy well i, I don't know if it was uh, i was inspired or i just missed you know how you miss things from your childhood and yeah. you just like want to kind of like go back into that place that was so you know like i don't know maybe magical or unique anyways i reached out to a uh, a new england comic book uh show promoter um shout out to gary summers of the northeast comic-con um but i called him up and said could i set up a hot sauce booth at your at your comic convention and he was like i love hot sauce so he sent me an application filled it out next thing i know i was the premier hot sauce vendor at a comic book convention and we actually did well. We did really well. People were coming there, you know, shopping for comics and toys and memorabilia, but we were there. My labels didn't have comic book art at that point. I had a, a dragon on the label. Uh, I met several artists at the show. Uh, Jay Moores, Charles Mossant. These guys are just pro are pros. And Charles came over to my booth and to actually buy hot sauce and taste it. And he started telling me, oh, he loves hot sauce. He's got sauces with 10 million Scoville units at home. I mean, this guy really gets into it. Anyways, we started talking about different labels. And, and we just started like, coming up with ideas as a, almost as a joke. We were just like, yeah, wouldn't it be cool with a hot sauce label? Had a, a femme fatale burning a guy tied to a chair. And he's on fire in the middle of a, of a, of a, of a, of a dark city landscape scene. Anyways. We said, wait a minute. These are cool ideas. Next thing I know, I've got artwork coming into my email inbox and and I've kind of revamped the look of my of the hot sauce. Each flavor has a unique piece of artwork now. Yeah, that's okay. Now, now you clarify that because I thought you said before that each bottle had a unique artwork. And I said, what are they doing? Sitting there by hand painting each bottle before they send them out there? <laughs> it's oh, impossible, oh, yeah. right? That would be, yeah, that, yeah. Would be, that, would be an under, that would be an undertaking. 600 bottles per batch, each one with its own uh, artwork. Now, each flavor has its own, has its own, uh, has its own graphic. Excellent. Hey, now, a lot of people seem to get into the hot sauce business, right? And Ron Jeremy, who's uh, in the news right now for his legal <laughs> troubles, <laughs> he had his own hot sauce too. Is, is this something? Uh, have you ever like are there hot sauce conventions where you meet these other guys? You know there are. I haven't been to the Northeast uh, Hot Sauce Expo. It's in New York City. I don't know if it's me or what it is. I kind of stay away from um, like the in crowds within this particular industry i find mm. that it's that it's like a who you know type of club and and um i mean maybe at some point i'll go to a, a hot sauce expo and, and and mingle with my peers but i haven't been there yet i mean i i buy hot sauce and i you know, i seek it out and i try all the different flavors but i haven't been to the expo now off the air you were telling me about you know how you got into silk city hot sauce and what your lifestyle is like now and how you enjoy going out why don't you tell us about how you what, what an average day at the hot sauce uh, world is like Sure. Um, well, for example, 
next week we're going to be we're going to be running a batch of um, habanero sauce. Hmm. So it, it it pretty much um, it's it's an early start. The kitchen is three hours way up north. It's still it's in Vermont. It's a commercial kitchen. So like I said earlier, I I turned my kitchen into a laboratory. That's only for experimenting. But the, the sauce itself is made in a commercial kitchen. It's it's way up north. Um, flashback a couple of months. The pepper harvest is in September, October. I go down to the farm and I load up my 99 Suburban. Big black, looks like I, I, I'm in the Secret Service uh, Suburban with with uh, just you know, 250, 300 pounds of peppers, whatever I can fit in there per load. And I bring it to a, uh, a freezer space because uh, I can't make all the sauce all at once. So I get fresh peppers and then whatever I don't make with the fresh peppers, I freeze. So next week, I'm going to head over to my freezer, and I'm going to unload a couple hundred pounds of habaneros that were grown right down the street from here. I'm going to drive up to the kitchen, and uh, I'm going to leave the house around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, get there at 8, and we're going to start processing the habaneros, fresh carrots, fresh garlic, apple cider vinegar, a little mm. bit of salt, and a few extra seasonings. This is this is the habanero sauce I'm talking about. Yeah. So it's it's full of fresh farm grown habaneros, and that's the key. Um, a lot of times, I, I challenge anybody listening out there to look at bottles at the grocery store when when you look at the ingredients and you see stuff like guar gum or xanthan gum. That's all thickening agents. Um, that that basically turns like a watery substance into a thick sauce. So it's it's an illusion. There's nothing there's nothing in that in these sauces. What the thickness is from the peppers and the the garlic and the, and the fresh carrots and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to process all those peppers and then we're going to we're going to cook them in a big sixty gallon kettle, and um, and then we and then, and then we're going to bottle each 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 one. Each, and then each one gets a cap, gets put on by hand, boxed up. It takes about 14, 15 hours to run that cycle twice. And then I'll drive home and plot. <laughs> I haven't heard that expression in a while. Now, uh, I'd say it's great to hear this, you know, all natural products and flavors and stuff like that. Now, just like PureSoapFlake.com, you know, the, another sponsor of ours. It's, it's really... It feels good. The kind of sponsors we have are like local types, you know, locally grown, pure organic type folks, uh, like uh, SilkCityHotSauce.com. Now, um, have you ever considered uh, branching out like into pepper spray and making those uh, self-defense uh, weapons? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that, that's not a bad idea. I, um, we could we could we could we could use the chaff, the stuff that's left over, and keep, it keeps the bears away. I, I know a lot of people that do that around here. Um, that's as far as as far as crime goes. That's what that's, that's that's what we're dealing with. Oh, so you got bears where you we live? Yeah, we're we're in the middle of we're basically in the middle of the woods in uh, in Vermont. I live on a you know we literally live on a dirt road. Really? Um, so yeah, as far as crime goes, um, yeah, we just keep the critters keep the critters away. But I guess we're we're blessed up here to be on, you know to be honest with you. You like that lifestyle, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually moving. I'm in a, in a small beach town now, and I'm moving. It's a little too too uh, small, <laughs> a little too remote for me. Like, you know, I need to do tires, and they tell me I can't get tires the same day. i got to wait like a week for the tires to ship in. I can't live like that. Let's go wow. through the, the – I know. Yeah, I can't live like that. Now, let's go through the eight flavors from mild to wild. What do you got here? The sweet, spicy mango madness. What's that like? Sure, the mango madness. That's kind of in the middle. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll just start right here. I'll start. I'll go. I'll start yeah. at like the mildest. We've got a we've got a chipotle sauce. That's our mildest sauce. It's called the Bobby Biggs Chipotle. Bobby Big is is a uh, is a Houston based comedian. He's hilarious and he loves food. He's a big guy. He actually just lost a lot of weight. Um, shout out to Bob Bigger staff. He uh, he's he's the character on the label. So in case if, if you go to my website to see the chipotle. This sauce features fresh and smoked jalapenos, uh, Vermont maple syrup, a little pumpkin, uh, some smoked paprika, cider vinegar. It's sweet, smoky, and mild. This is not going to blow the to- you know blow the top off your head or anything like that. It's almost it's almost it's almost barbecuey. Mm. Uh, that's the chipotle, smoky. That's uh, the classic Texas flavor. 
moving 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 up a, a step or two. We have a sauce called the Ad Tech Attack. It's got a really cool label. That-